everyone. I am Biko Kai Supir on Buddha Sasana program of the Cambodian Buddhist Monk Society in USA. Before I begin, let me start by paying homage to the Triple Gym, the Buddha, Dhamma, and the Sangha with my highest respect and also my personal respect to all venerable monks around the world who happen to watch this talk show and also my respect to uh, both speakers who appear on our show today and before uh, we start to talk on our topic i would like to introduce uh, our two speakers here uh, mrs wang mo from uh, juicy berkeley from berkeley and she is the, the uh, executive director of the dhamma college and as well as the president of the uh, international uh, buddhist association of america uh, 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 sorry if i spelled it wrong and 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 you uh, it's very honor for me for you to join us today to talk on this topic so uh, our topic is uh, filial piety and we also have uh, another uh, speakers from uh, phnom penh cambodia uh, this is uh, mr nyam chunni and he is the uh, lead uh, trainer uh, of meditation of a vipassa if i'm is this right right yeah, yeah so yeah. uh he will be uh speaking from from cambodia on uh, this uh show with us and he will be sharing uh, his uh, perspective and ideas of the filial piety and how can we you know i personally uh uh think that this topic is very important for all of us uh as a as a person that we we all owe too much to our elders generation especially uh, of our parents grandparents and relatives and teachers and people that uh, living around us and we can say that all uh, human beings as a whole because uh, we wouldn't be having everything in our life without their share of uh, activities and share of their ideas and 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 many more things so I would like to start uh, our question. Uh, I wanted to hear from Mrs. Uh, Wang Mo first. Uh, based on your traditions and cultures, uh, what should be uh, what 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 can be uh, uh, say about these uh, particular topics, uh, the filial piety that that a younger generation has to pay uh, gratitude to our elders, uh, particularly parents. So. What was your social norm on this uh, topic, and what would, uh, what did the people say about it? So, could you please share your uh, the way of thinking, and as well as the, based on your cultures and tradition, that people are, are talking about this uh, particular topics? Thank you. Thank you, and uh, thank you to all the venerable monks who are also participating, and to all the participants. Um, it's a great honor to be here on this program, especially to talk about filial piety. Um, the subject is actually very interesting because uh, for myself, I was brought up here in the West. I was brought up in Berkeley, California uh, in the late 1960s um, when the Buddha Dharma was just in a way, um, the name of Buddha and Dhamma is new a little bit in, in the Berkeley community. So in the West culture, especially where I'm from, um, Buddhism is fairly new. Um, even though we have like now 50 years behind us, but um, with that came uh, my father and of course my mother, but my father in particular, who comes from the Tibetan tradition uh, and from a long lineage of um, master and disciple, master or disciple. So very strong roots in the Buddha Dharma and originally coming from um, India. Of course, the root of the Buddha Dharma is coming from India and then it spread to, to Tibet. And then he came to India for um, some time as a refugee and then came to America. And I was born here in the West. So now 50 years, uh, I'm uh, a mother of two children, two teenagers, 
And I've been exposed to very strong roots in the Buddha Dharma because my father is a religious figure. And I grew up with uh, symbols of the Buddha Dharma everywhere, either a Buddhist flag or a Buddha image or hearing about um, various great masters. So from early age till now, I've been exposed with my eyes and my mind in, in the Buddha Dharma. That's been my roots. But I'm also here in the West. And in the West, it is not a Buddhist culture. Uh, we have many uh, distractions or we have many ways of, um, uh, am I still on? I, I don't know if I'm still on, but. Um, yes, you're on. That there are, are not necessarily um, Buddhist. So I find that um, I'm in a very interesting place in my life where uh, the moment I step outside of Dharma College, I am in the world, in the Western world where um, people have their their strong culture too and how do we bring what we have been brought up as uh in in in, in our life into a place where we can connect with others and really show the fruits of um, the teachings of the buddha dhamma and of course the sangha which is the community so um i would say that i was brought up in a very traditional with strong roots in the dharma but I'm also um, been brought up in the West. So all of my schooling, my education, and I live here in the West. Um, yeah, so that's what I would like to share. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much. You know, uh, I have seen your activities, your works uh, at the International Tupitaka uh, Chanting and, and many more works related to the Buddhist activities and you, you have done a, a a wonderful job for you know for sharing and 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 working uh especially the sharing this the wisdom of the of the teaching of the buddha to the public and 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 it it, it is uh, i think a lot of people a lot uh, and many monks i think they are very grateful for your works uh, because it it represents our our values as, as the buddhist practitioners so and yes yeah, thank you for that and i will i, I will turn back the, the question to you and now i would like to I uh, start with Mr. Nyum uh, Chani on this uh, particular topic. You know, in in Cambodian, we usually say "ketanyu ketak vedita." You know, so uh, I, I then I for my translation is like like you know, knowing one gratitude and then one should do whatever it takes to pay them back. So right. that that is similar meaning of uh, I think this in the Pali language. And so, what would be the uh, the norm of the Cambodian culture, the Cambodian tradition? And, and and what have you learned as you as you are Cambodian from your eldest generation? What have they talked about it? So what uh, what how can you how can you share this with the with the people and especially the younger generation on on this particular topic? So please uh, share with us your perspective and ideas based on your cultures. Thank you. Thank you, Venerable um, Sophia, and a good morning, uh, Wong Mo from Cambodia. It's my great honor to be here um, on the show and also thank for all the, I'm grateful to be here. I'm grateful for all the organizers for this um, um, talk show. Um, very first word about being grateful that I learned when I was young. Um, my, my grandma, every time she has meal, either breakfast or lunch or dinner, she always um, pay respect and say thank you. And I, I was like, what are you doing? Why you say thank you to the rice? Why you say thank you to the foods on the table? And I was very young back then. Um, she said, it's important that we are grateful to whatever's on the table because without this, we won't have our life. Then I start to, I start to realize I, like the food didn't say anything, didn't know anything, why do we need to to be grateful to the food or to whatever's on the table. And from time to time, I start to really understand. And to my grandfather, used to be a monk. And he, there's a time he said, Chuni, do you want to be a monk? I said, why, do, why should I be a monk? And he said, because his grandparent also used to be a monk. 
in order to pay gratitude to our ancestor, to our parent, you should be a monk too, uh, especially pay gratitude to the parent. So I, I start to hear more of the word gratitude. Um, um, in I start to hear more since I was young. So myself, I was a monk for uh, more than sixteen years. I mean, I I'm, I'm, I, I'm I felt privileged, I felt very gratitude that I was a monk myself to study Buddhism and practice Buddhism since I was a young age. And I also spent um, some time in several countries teaching Buddhism uh, meditation to um, either Cambodian or Asian people or some part of Western world as well. So um, the more I start to feel gratitude, uh, um, I'm grateful of uh, seeing, understand the value of being gratitude to whatever people do to me, or being gratitude to whatever thing happened to me, and I feel more happy. I feel more appreciate along the way as well. So within Cambodia, um, in Cambodian culture, the word "get the new" is quite important. It's quite we say. Within our culture, we, we, we say collectivism, which means the family live close together. Even, even now, I mean, now we live in modern city, 21 century. Um, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of people, um, they live the family after high school in the city. But at the countryside, I mean, everybody still live together. Everybody still live in the same house. I still remember each time I visit home, my my relative or my parents still have, you know, just one one big of one big bowl in the soup, and then everybody put this uh, dip the spoon in together, not using a different spoon. So we see that we see the sense of community still existed in the countryside, but not pretty much in the town, not pretty much in in city. So myself, I am very grateful that I. You know, I had a chance to be a monk. I had a chance to be in the temple, and I had a chance to learn Buddhism. Also, I had a chance to um, to travel to different places as well. So, in conclusion, we say grateful is the part for um, the scholar. Great, grateful is the part for for those who live in a happier life. Because the more grateful we are, the more appreciate we have in life. Yeah. Thank, thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much for your ideas on uh, this particular topic. And I would like to turn to Mrs. Wang Mo. You know, a lot of younger generation uh, have, a, have a different definition of achievements in their life. I know we often are uh, struggling and then uh, putting more efforts to, 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 to work hard and then achieve something. And in America, I think you have seen that we often, uh, often forget our elders mostly most of our elders ended up in the how a nursing home and you know uh so based on the buddha's teaching or what is your personal ideas how can we inspire people that to pay more attention to their elders because because for what for what every every one of us have right about it, about properties knowledge or certificates or whatever achievement you 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 might have gotten but the root of those achievement is your parents, grandparents. So uh, I wonder how can you uh, uh, share this uh, particular, on, on the particular topics and to inspire people to understand their roots and, and keep uh, their practice of uh, taking care of their parents or their elders uh, in place that they are not tend to forget when, when they achieve uh, something in their life. So, so please, thank you. Um. Well, I think that modernization today, um, in a way, is really going against um, this idea of the family, um, as our, our, you know, the other um, speaker here, Mr. Nom, was saying that this beautiful idea of having a soup pot and everyone sharing together in, in, in the community, that's so rare today um, in the West. We don't, our families, um, at the age of 18 um, and there's such a proud moment when you're 18 is like now i'm free <laughs> i can be independent and i can yeah. up and and do my own thing and that is in a way the very much a western model of people 
uh, after their high school, they go on uh, to for college and college, they quickly go on to get a degree, uh, a further degree or go on for a job. And it gets further and further away from the family. Um, unless you have a kind of traditional family roots um, that encourage you to come back. But generally here in the West, the most people are quite away from their family after a certain age until they get married and maybe have grand, you know, they have children and then they bring them back to the grandchildren for visits. So um, how do you deal with that when that is sort of the normal? That seems to be kind of the normal. Maybe in the East, it's very abnormal. Yes. Uh, the, Mr. Norm is saying we have a soup pot and we share together. Uh, and there's a sense of even living together. So I would say that, um, you know, one way uh, is, you know, you have to allow them the freedom because they come of a certain age and, and that's just the way it is. But if they can learn through their life the importance of what the wisdom that your parents teach you, because there will be moments in your life that may be challenging. There will be moments in your life that are kind of um, as if you are entering into this wide world. And which direction do you go? You can go many different directions, but the elders or your parents have some kind of experience. They have some kind of wisdom that we can look to, kind of like as a tool for us to learn very close in because they want to give you the very best advice. They may not be able to hear it. They may not be able to understand that this is actually good advice. But if they experience in their life, maybe through hardship, maybe through some kind of suffering or dukkha, they will recognize that what the parents did for them is actually of benefit because they only want to give you the very best. So same thing for me. I have two teenagers. I try to give them a little bit of the tradition, but they are also in the West. So I can do whatever I can, but ultimately they have to decide how to drive their life, you know? And if they can go back to the roots and see the wisdom, see and understand that these teachings of the Buddha Dharma are so full of wisdom and give you peace and give you a sense of accomplishment, inner accomplishment. It may not be outside accomplishment, but inside accomplishment, how to grow that so that we truly understand ourselves, uh, like the Buddha, that we can understand who we are, how our mind operates, how our body functions. So the more that we understand, understand ourselves, we don't have to get into problem situations. Yes, yeah. Thank you so much for 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 that uh, great ideas because you know uh, freedom, but not misunderstanding. Of course, uh, because it's important. Sometimes people are, are are defining the the word of freedom in a different ways, and then tend to go into the negative concepts of of it. But you know, uh, it is important that uh, all of us to to understand the the freedom with wisdom that you can live uh, a life with with happiness. So this is very grateful for, for the, the, your ideas. And I would like to turn to Mr. Chuni, you know, as you are a former Buddhist monk, and I think you have uh, learned a lot about uh, Buddha's teaching. And I would like to bring up, uh, you know, in Tibetica, I forgot the volume, uh, the Buddha uh, has mentioned the purpose of parent. I think a lot of people are, are tend to be parents, and then uh, some people are going to be parents. So so basically, we, we, well, we ask a question and people are going to be a parent, we ask a question, what is the purpose of being a parent? You know, in, in Tipitaka, uh, the Buddha has mentioned that uh, one of the, I think there are five of them, but I, I don't know whether I can I remember all of it. So one of the purpose that, uh, the, the purpose of the parent to have children is that when they get old, so the kids can, can look after them, or at least can hold their hands to walk and, you know, uh, feed them back when they are in need of, of the food, so they want that is one of one of the purpose and and another purpose is that uh they want to see their children to carry on their lineage or their you know their their names and 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 their 
a the uh, integrity and uh, and then another thing is that uh, another purpose is uh, to share their uh, the purpose of planning is to share their uh, their the properties the wealth and yeah I think I think if you can add more I think I I, I a long time I didn't I didn't uh, 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 for going on this but that that is the the basically the main purpose of being parents and then a lot of people are I think uh, as a younger generation they they are going to be parents one day and then they will ask the question what is the purpose of being a parent you know when you know uh, it, as in America you 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 raise a person to be an 18 and then uh, they become freedom like as, as as to do as, as what they wish so so what would be uh, what uh, what can you describe and what can you explain on this uh, purpose of being a parent so how can uh, that person pay the gratitude back to uh, to to their parents to those who who invest too much you know to who dedicated you know I, 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 we as we uh, we look at the, a younger children like a, an an, a, 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 an infant you know to raise one baby is extremely difficult you know <laughs> so so if you can please uh, share with us what is uh, what would you say and and how can you inspire people to understand this? thank you. Uh, thank you, Venerable, once again. Also, thank uh, Wang Mo for bringing up the word uh, freedom, freedom with the wisdom. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll say something about it, but I have not, I don't have enough feeling that I'm, because I'm not a father yet, so <laughs> I probably not have a fully understood of how, you know, uh, why we have children. So, um, but before that, let me um, bring your your attention back to the Buddha time a little bit. Um, the Buddha himself, after he gained enlightenment, there's a time he um, went back to the heaven to um, help support his um, mom's spirit, spirit. And also after he gained enlightenment, the, the very first thing that he was uh, being grateful that he, he thought of his two master, um, Alara, um, Alara and Ramaphosa, um, master the one who taught him meditation and wanted to taught him the the um yoga or attacking yoga the body so he himself already um profound he himself already connected the word um gratitude gratefulness um so i mean myself i am i'm myself i'm really grateful that i had a chance to be a monk i had a chance to understand more learn more about buddhism without without temple without buddhism I would not be talking to you. I would not be where I am right now because I was a buffalo boy when I was young. I was taking care of buffalo, but because of Buddhism, because of temple, lead my life to where I am right now. So <laughs> let's go back to the reason um, to um, why, let's say, why parents created children. So um, as I as I understand from uh, my grandparent or from my um, relatives and family back home. Um, you were right. It, 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 um, the very first thing is important that um, to share the the knowledge, the experience that already handed down for many generations to the younger generation. But also in Cambodia, we talk a lot about the inherited, the property, you know, and also talking about taking care um, the parent when the parent getting old. I mean, this among five, there's a five duty for the child. Uh, there's a five duty, but one of those duty, the kid or the children have to take care of the parent when the parent getting old, either supporting um, the food, the accommodation, or the medicine, or all of those whatever in needed for life. So let's just let's just go back to the word get the new get that with the in Khmer, feel ill and piety. So this a uh, very this is a very important, quite unique. We say the more to live in life, we can't forget about, about our ancestor. We can't forget about what's already happened like thousand years ago. We live in modern world, in modern city. We live in, because at the moment, everybody, a lot more people are trying to achieve something. We say by become more success to have a big home or achieve whatever whatever it is happening so we try to run try to run after the material we try to run after those um um and, and we are very consumerism no, no matter how no matter how much we achieve no matter how much we have 
if we don't have enough gratitude um, habit, if we don't have enough um, gratitude um, activity within our life, we probably not very happy. We probably not um, very satisfied. Like uh, uh, one more was just saying that, you know, we learn about Buddhism, we understand more about ourselves. So being grateful to being being um, gratitude to what we learn from the Buddha, being gratitude to what we learn from our ancestor, it helped us to connect more to our soul. It helped us to understand more of their part already happened. So when we when we have enough time to understand the ancestors part to understand what already led down in the former time so that we can use that knowledge to combine with what the modern of, and community we're living so that life full of enrichment life full of um, um what we call um the old path from the the old master so that we can live a better life we say in business where we say the old wisdom and the modern wisdom together it comes money or it comes um, property. We can't just forget our ancestor. We can't just forget our parent. We can't just forget who lived the path, who saw the path before us or ahead. Otherwise, we won't, we won't actually um, go easily. We won't actually create the path easily. Like, for example, when the kid grow up, the kid probably the first thing they learn is from the parent. When they are able to go to school, they learn from school, from the, com from the community. So the very first first thing they should be grateful is their parent. The more kids are grateful to the parent, the more happiness and the more sense of community they are within the family. Myself, I really miss the most being a, 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 as a community. I miss the most um, when I was a monk that every time we had lunch or we had breakfast together as a community. So I felt that sense of community is um, still strong touch to my heart. And I really miss that. Each time I think of it, it helped me to be more compassionate, to give more, to share more to whoever needed around me. So I think this is, this is, this is why it's important that the young generation should be more open to learn to understand, to accept. They can ag adapt whatever they can adapt into the modern community, but it's important to it's important to understand and it's important to learn. Also, it's important to give back to the native or it's important to give back to the older or mainly to the parents. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Cheney, for your uh, perspectives on, on this uh, topic. And I would like to turn to Mrs. Wang Mo, I think, uh, we would get more uh, ideas and wisdom from you because as you are a mom, uh, so you know basically not not uh, you know it is a common sense that being a mom that what uh, we want our children to be. I think you uh, you have you would have more uh, uh, ideas better than us because uh, as you are a mom. So you know one of that you know as I said as I, as I, as I mentioned that the purpose of being a parent is that we want our our children. To, to look after us when when we as parents couldn't couldn't help ourselves when we get where we are aging, and at the same time also to carry the uh, our uh, names and you know uh, lineage uh, forward to the to, to the next generation and as well as to uh, to share and to provide and to look after the properties and wealth and and one more important thing things on that is that to be a good person in the society. You know, uh, we, you know, I think most of uh, all parents, we can say that want to see their children to be uh, a, a valuable assets to the community, uh, to the family, as well as to the country and to the world. So what would uh, what you say? What would you say to that? And, and how can you inspire people to understand this? I think uh, uh, you would uh, share with us your very great ideas on this. So thank you so much. So please go ahead. Thanks. I think that, um you know, so much of how we learn are from our examples. You know, the reason why I am so motivated to do working for the Dharma or giving my life in service to the Dharma is because I have a great father who dedicated his, continues to dedicate, even at the age of 85, um, all of his energy uh, to the Buddha Dharma. And I see it with my own eyes. 
seeing how much he cares for preserving the teaching. For me, that was my example, you know, very strong example, a living example. And um, I also, as a parent, have to be an example. So I have to be able to really live a life that they can look to uh, as an example. Uh, they may not understand it at this age when they're 18. They may not understand it at the age of 25. But maybe one day they will understand what their parents did and what the sacrifice and why they did it. Because they have to look back and see, these were my parents. What did they do? And you continuously have to be open in the communication. Because, of course, when you're 18, and just starting out, especially here in the West, they want, they have so many opportunities to go. This freedom is a very strong word. And you, 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 ha you can't offer the control of that freedom, but you have to let go. As a parent, I think that's been, I tell my kids, you are my teachers uh, more than anything else because I have to learn from them. Uh, more than anything about how to adjust or how to learn from them so that they understand. And it may not be just because I told them, I tell you this is how it should be, that it should be like this, but more that they learn and they open up in their own heart to understand the importance and the significance because one day I won't be here and they have to understand themselves um, what is important and they have to understand and open the heart for appreciation. And I think that moment when you have that gratitude, like our speaker was talking about, is a very beautiful moment. And it doesn't necessarily happen immediately. It's not taken for granted. You have to, it's something that happens very naturally when um, someone has great gratitude for an elder and respect and it comes naturally. Um, so if you give them the good roots, you have to in some way let go. You have to let go because um, you, you know, if you control them, um, they, they may just be you know, not really understanding in the long term. So um, you have to trust that. There has to be deep trust that they will understand and maybe one, one, you know, sometime in the future, they will open their heart to the Buddha Dharma or to understanding about respect, to understanding um, the teachings or um, you know, gratitude. Uh, and I think the more that you stay close to culture uh, and see and visit, I think my father was very smart. I went to Bodh Gaya when I was 18. Every year he would take me uh, from 18 in the winter. And I didn't understand why, because my friends we're going and doing other things for the Christmas holiday. But why I go to Bodh Gaya, fly <laughs> for 20 hours on the flight and then get on the train and the train mm -hmm. to Gaya. At that time, no airport in Gaya. <laughs> yes. yeah. And we have to take the many books of Buddhist books to give. And I don't understand why, but now at, you know, at, when I when I had my children and I have some life experience, I look back on what my parents did, and because of them, I am who I am. Just like Mr. Noam said, without them, I am nothing. Because they really gave me the direction, they gave me all their care. And if I can do that to my children, it's a different world now. I mean, I feel like 50 years ago is very different than today world. And so I will try my best to give... <laughs> I can for my kids, but I don't know. I mean, I hope that they go to Borgaya. I hope they will meet the monks. I hope they will meet, you know, the great masters. That's my wish. But sometimes we have to also uh, let go and 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 to understand that there is a trust and there's karma, you know, mm -hmm. karma. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. This is a very, a very, you know, life is all about learning. You know, we have. You have to learn and then adapt and then uh, think about it and then and then it yeah. will be automatically changed 
by its yeah. nature. Pe people can be a better person only because they learn from the past, and then and then live with the pres uh, with uh, with the present and then change for the future. So it is important for all of us. And you know, I I have read in an, an, an article and it was so inspiring, and it's so fascinating. On you know, the, a, a person uh, she is a Malaysian and then uh, came to the United States and and live here for a number of years and then she wrote an article about that and she said uh, as, uh, the longer she lived in the united states and she she keep telling herself that this is not what uh, who i am this is not what i want in life because uh, she she keep uh, because she was raised by her grandmother and in malaysia and she was saying that uh, the more longer she lived she has everything in the us a job a good job a good pay a good pay you know everything but it doesn't touch her feeling so at some point you know at the age of like but when the, when the, her grandmother is getting very old and she decided to uh, give up everything in the us and then go back home and then and then uh, live with her grandmother and then she said that that is what i am because this is represent uh, represent who we are as a person because you know when, uh, what you have is 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 of course it, it is everything in your life but but that in, uh, that doesn't uh, represent your values and 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 your 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 everything that you that, that make you happy so you know, it, that article is inspiring you know and then uh, hearing from you that you've been to Buddha Gaya for a number of times since a young age and then you know that that because that that uh, injected into your your brain your feeling your and and everything so and and that's important for all of us to learn you know to observe and learn and then make some certain change and for the better and and, and it, that that is that is that is called the philippiety because we pay a gratitude to the one who who have done it first for for our our, uh, our uh, destination so i would like, also would like to turn this uh, question into uh, mr An another question to mr shunya of course as a person we we have many masters we have many uh, instructors we have many teachers uh, who who sacrifice, who dedicate, and, and who, and in, especially in Cambodia, you know, we have many, uh, especially monks. As you are a temple boy, and I myself a temple boy, and we live in a temple. And then monks are, are brought us up, and the, the teachers and the guided us. So, as a person, you know, we owe them too much. We owe them that they own their guidance, the teachers, the teachings that they they advise us, they corrected us, you know, leading us. So. How can we express, you know, uh, for Mr. Chuni, how can we express our gratitude toward our teachers and, and, and people around us? So could you please share, uh, share your ideas and perspective as your personal experiences as well? Thank you. I might think about once again. I, uh, before going to that, I would like to um, mention uh, uh, one more was saying about her trip to, to Purgaya by train or by, by bus or whatever. It reminded me when I was a young, when I was very young, my pet mainly on Khmer New Year or the Pyongyang, the, Bo the Buddhist festival within we call Pyongyang Day or Khmer New Year, my pet in Norway um, organized, you know, um, food and dessert <clears throat> and asked me to go around to, to offer those food to the older people around my village. And I, I was, I was, in, I was a no why you know i didn't really know why why i did that but each time i did it with my mom i felt so blessed i felt so happy after we offer we gave them some some small money we gave them some food we gave them some kind of dessert and each time i did it, i just felt so happy and i didn't know I, I didn't know anything about it i only come to understand right after i became a novice monk like you know many years ago so this is this is how it connected you know when we when we kind of do something back to those who used to do something good for us. So um, regarding to the question that Venerable Monk asking about how we pay gratitude to our master, you're right. Um, I have many master monks um, through my life as a monk. Um, each time that I, each time that I think about my life, I think about where I'm right now. I thought those parts. I thought those many masters along the way, um, not just not just 
the master who helped ordain me as a monk, but also the, the older, I call the senior monk. One of the senior monks that I would never forget, I would never forget about him. Um, he was very, um, he was very strict. He was very principled. Even when do the chanting, just oh, he, he was, one oh. hit. You hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Go on. Yeah, yes. Actually, keep going. Hit my heart. I, think yeah. I was so angry without him, forcing, without him forcing me to practice more. I would not understand what I know right now. So, by paying gratitude to the master, I mean, first, we don't need to consider our material of, of anything that we need to offer. So, each day, I, I would. As, as me as a person or whoever live on the earth, any material, we don't have anything to offer back. At least each day, it's important to just wake up and be grateful to say, I am so grateful that I have my master help me along the way. I am so grateful that I have my parent because I I thought I'm in a good parent that's where, where I am right now. I am so grateful for all the friends and people around that helped support me along the way. That's why I am where I am right now. So I just remind that each day, it's spent only like three to five minutes, we call grateful morning. Being grateful to the master, being grateful to the parent, being grateful to the nature, being grateful to surround it. The more we do that, the more we find life happy. The more we do that, the more we find um, life more appreciated because we can't live without those old paths. We can't live without those old masters those old parents and those teaching. So that's why I think it's important to, to just take five to three minutes. In English, we say, um, how you start your morning is how you start your day. If we start our morning great, then the whole day will be great. For me, each day I meditate in a morning and before I go to bed. So while I do meditation in the morning, you know, I'm just doing, I'm just being grateful to the health that I'm having. I'm grateful to the light that I'm having um, um, every day. I'm grateful to the master. I'm grateful to the teaching. I'm grateful to um, friend. I'm grateful to all those people around me. The more I am doing grateful, the more I am happy. And also, it's important to pay respect to those around you. It's important to pay respect to those old masters. So the more we do that, the more we connect it to the friendship, the more we have all good friends around, at least people say, hey, he's a good man, you know, whatever happened, he he at least paid back to his community by by giving something or by just sharing the smile, by just sharing the good word. So I, I think this is important that the younger generation or whoever live on, on the earth, it's important to be grateful to the Buddha, to the teaching, to the Jesus Christ, to whoever that will share the, the planet. Thank, thank you. you, thank you so much. So I think we are almost about the time to to end our talk show. So I will give each of you uh, one or two minutes so we can uh, sum up your uh, personal thinking and ideas of this uh, particular topic. So as I would like to start with uh, Mrs. Fang Mo, what, what would you like to say in order to inspire people to you know to to understand this uh, particular topic to understand that how grateful they are to have the parents who look after them as, uh, as well as the people, good people that live in that sort of surrounding them. So as a person, what should they, you know, uh, practice and what should they do in, in their daily life? So please, uh, Mr. Mrs. Wang. Say that, you know, I'm so deeply grateful to my parents and uh, for everything that they have given me. My mother's not here, but for my father, for giving me the direction in my life uh, to be so close to the Buddha, Dhamma, and Sangha, and to give my life to that. Um, and I would never have known about that. My eyes or my mind would not have known about this until my father introduced it to me. And so I would say to all of you, who are of the younger generation, that our parents wish and do the very best for them. They, they, they care in the, 
in the most beautiful way, whatever capacity they can. And they are serving you for your future. And so even though we are here in the West where we have this independence, um, this very, um, you know, wish to become independent, to go our own way and to find our own path. Yes, this is true. Many people are doing that. But don't forget uh, your parents. Don't forget your roots. My father always said, don't forget your roots. And um, your roots are where you came from. And um, there's tremendous wisdom that has been passed on from hundreds of years into um, these families. And you can take it for your benefit, um, what that wisdom is. Of course, today is a modern day um, society. So how you bring that into this new day, it depends on you. But if you can stay close with the wisdom, with the wisdom teachings, that would be an incredible tool for you. It's like having more valuable than anything else, maybe, you know, your friend's directive or an exciting idea, um, something that's very tempting or very distracting. But if you know that you have some wisdom from your parents, you can choose, you can think carefully how to use that wisdom in your daily life. And to connect to gratitude is very important. When the heart opens up to gratitude, then you can start to really live a life full of meaning and purposeful because you are thankful, you are grateful for what you have been given. And when you start your day that way, as, as Mr. Noam says, it's a very different day when your mind opens up into gratitude, when you start to think about how thankful you are for what you have, it's a very different orientation than what can I get? How can I get this? It's very, it's like a very different perspective. So if you start your day with, I am grateful for being alive. I am grateful for being in this human body, especially during this pandemic time when there's so many people who are not, you know, surviving, but we have so much to be grateful for. And so, and to take care of those that took care, that took care of you, to, to give back to your family and give them a smile, give them, give them something that will make them feel good, especially at this time. And so thank you for giving me this opportunity to share a little bit of what I know, but if it's worth anything, I, I, I offer it. It's a lot. It's a lot. Thank you so much. You know, it, it's we are we are very honored to have you on our show. And and as I'm up to um, Mr. Uh, one minute, please. Uh, please, uh, you want to say to the people on this particular topic? Thank you. Thank you once again, Venerable um, Sophia. You hear me? Yes. 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 Keep okay. Going. So. Um, like uh, one more was said, it's all about gratitude to the parent, to ancestor. So I'm, I'm very um, deeply grateful to my grandfather that he allowed me to be a monk, that I learned the path. And also I'm grateful to the temple, to, to Buddhism, to all friends and my family who allowed me to do what I am doing right now as well. So I'm, I'm really grateful for that. Um, like one more was just saying, Think of your root. Be grateful to your root, to where you came from. This is so important. Um, as a young generation, I mean, younger generation, if you want to be success, if you want to be, I mean, if you want to be success and help build your country, your community, your community, it's important first to be, help yourself and be grateful to yourself and really help support your parents, be grateful to your parents, to your ancestors. So those will give you a lot of energy to go along as well. So at the end, I would just say, those who ever grateful have a, what we call a gratitude habit in life, you'll find uh, an easy way, you find a happiness 
part along the way as well. So this is in why we call Captain Yu Kata Aviti. So do whatever we can to give back to those who helped support us before. And be grateful not just in the spirit, not just in heart, but also try to try to do something back as an action as well. So the more we the more we live a life with gratefulness, the more we find the success and happiness within our heart. So I am really grateful to be able to join the show um, this morning um, from Cambodia with um, Venerable Sophia and also Mrs. Rangmo. My my gratitude to all of you for doing this work. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you so much. So I would like to uh, wrap up this uh, talk show and then thank you to all Venerable Monks who happen to watch this show and then uh, to all the people. Uh, be grateful for what you have. Be grateful to your parents. Be grateful to everything around you and do whatever it takes uh, to pay them back, you know, whether it is uh, simply a good thought toward others is more than enough that we all are grateful for. And uh, please stay safe and be mindful while living your life because we are living in this uh, pandemic and we are all in this together. Do your part to prevent it and then we all will uh, help each other and then go through this difficult time together. So please stay safe and have a wonderful day. Thank you so much.